I just thought I would come on and give you a little mini update. Uh, the van build is still well underway. If this video comes out first, which I think it might, uh, I'm about, I'm almost finished the electrical. I'm having an electrician come over and check over all the wiring I've done, check that I've done a good job, I haven't, not at risk of burning my house down. Um, it is full blown fall season so I've harvested all my green tomatoes, I've been out mushroom hunting and I've been making relish and the apples are now in season and the apples, I just picked up a whole heap of apple juice which is freshly pre pressed and unpasteurized so I'm going to be making some really delicious apple cider and I'm really looking forward to that. It'll be the first time I've ever made apple cider from local juice and where I live there's so many apple orchards and apple trees so I thought it's cheap and easy to access why don't I just do it? I don't have to press the apples myself, the juice is readily available. Uh, so I wanted to show you a few things. I'm so excited to be here. gone and followed a path and now I'm like I don't even know if this is a path like am I lost in the forest ah I can't tell anymore Right, I'll be back to you when I find the path. Good news, I found the trail. I'm not lost anymore. Look, there's something up here. God, what have I found in the forest? What the heck? Oh. I love finding bones in the woods. I really love exploring and learning about animals and respecting how they passed and finding out which part of the body that particular bone might be. This, I just found it. This is like the tailbone, I think, right? It would attach to the pelvis somehow and it looks like the real bottom of the spine. It's freaking cool. You might have seen my collection of bones in my van and I think this one here is gonna come with me. We'll do a little ritual and cleansing and welcoming and honoring of this animal. 
It's pretty freaking amazing. This was obviously once a road. Let's go have a look. This must have been some sort of like logging road at one point. Like, I don't know. Fucking look at this. What the hell? It's amazing. Just a freaking old wreck in the middle of the forest. Fall is just beginning. Look at those beautiful things. Just peeking out. There's an even bigger one here. I think this is a cauliflower mushroom. I've never picked one before and I'm very excited about it. It's so fragile. growing. Cover it up. There's another one here. But I'm gonna leave that one because it's quite small. I'll take this one home. It's so beautiful.
Uh, so I wanted to show you a few things. First of all, the tomatoes that I harvested and am um, in the process of making relish with. This is probably my fourth batch of relish and I haven't been able to film all of the batches of relish because it's just been too much chaos. I have abundant tomatoes. These ones are really tasty and there's two different varieties. These are dark ones and some of um, these delicious ones. And these ones here may ripen. And then I've got a nice big mixture of some yellow taxis and some big green, big red toms, which are these ones. Obviously they're not red. And some tomatillos. So I'm gonna mix, like, I'm gonna pickle all of it. And unfortunately, I have to do it in batches this size. So here's a batch that I'm probably just gonna cold can and eat myself, just as a test. It's really delicious. Uh, and I have been making some other not green tomato relish, but red tomato relishes. So let me show you those. So I have a tomato relish here. And we had an abundance of pears in September, so I have pear relish and pear chutney. They look really delicious. And then my favorite, we had so many blackberries, I made some I made some blackberry and cardamom jam. Cardamom is one of my favorite flavors. And so I have a large quantity of each of these in my pantry cupboard. In fact, I'm running out of space. Being it is an I live in a tall, tiny van, and now I'm going to be adding some green tomato relish to that collection too. Unfortunately, I don't have a much bigger pot, so I'm making using all of these tomatoes, but in small quantities. Yeah, lots of work. I've been making relish, and the apples are now in season, and the apples, I just picked up a whole heap of apple juice which is freshly pre pressed and unpasteurized so I'm going to be making some really delicious apple cider and I'm really looking forward to that. It'll be the first time I've ever made apple cider from local juice and where I live there's so many apple orchards and apple trees so I thought it's cheap and easy to access. Why don't I just do it? I don't have to press the apples myself, the juice is readily available. There's so many local orchard, apple orchards around here and last year I missed out. So this year I am determined to make some apple cider. I have a lot of apple juice. This morning I cleaned out this big glass, glass carboy and some of this apple juice is already fizzing so it's ready to pop into this container. This is the first time I've ever made apple cider. So I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> Wish me luck. Yeah, he's a cutie. Now yeah, what's that, there's apple juice. This is straight from the apple orchard and it was pressed only a few days ago. I love drinking cider, but sometimes it really sucks with the amount of preservatives and sulfites that are in our booze. So I thought, why not make my own?
I've been sick for a little bit, so there's been like lots of things piling up of things I need to get done and I've been waiting to do and you know, harvest fruit, fruit juice, fresh products. They don't wait around forever, so you have to kind of get on top of it while it's ripe or while it's fresh and get it done. So getting this apple cider started feels like another checklist off my fall do list and I'm like oh I was like really ready for a bit of a break from summer and slowing down and I think once winter comes and we're through the fall harvest season that'll happen but I'm excited to bring you with me look the trees are the, almost the same color as my hair it's there's a couple ways to make apple cider and let's be clear we're talking about hard apple cider not the non-alcoholic type. The first way is to add a champagne yeast. This is a, a type of wine yeast, um, which you can get from your local brewing store. I'm gonna try and do it a natural foundation, ferment, natural fermentation way and not add any yeast. But in order to do that, we need to let the natural yeasts be uncontaminated with any outside bacteria. So that includes putting in an airlock. So here I have this packet as a sterile airlock um, and we have a little sterile bung so that will sit right on top of here and prevent anything getting in. Actually before we do that let's stick the airlock in. And the airlock just sits inside this bung and prevents any outside bacteria or fruit flies or anything that shouldn't be in getting into this carboy which is fantastic. I'm definitely not a brewing expert. This is my first time making apple cider, hard apple cider. But what I do know is it's important to keep this clean and sterile so it's only the natural bacteria in here. And then if you're trying this at home, you can't just use any old apple juice because it's been pasteurized or it's got other preservatives added into it. So either juice your own apples or see if you can get some straight from an orchard where it's just fresh pressed and nothing's been added or done to the juice. They say to store your cider in a cool, dark place. So, since my new van is still in a state of construction, it is nice and cool. And to make it dark, Gonna wrap Freddy the cider bug up in my sleeping bag to keep him at an insulated even temperature. <laughs> 